and let's go over the specs. So there is the board itself. Uh, obviously the dual 2011 sockets take up the majority of the space on this board. I think this board is for someone who wants the most amount of cores and the most amount of RAM that they can possibly throw out a system for the least amount of money. Uh, the CPUs, the motherboard, and the memory on this cost me $585, which for a 16 core 32 thread system with 64 gigs of RAM, that is insanely cheap. Uh, thousand years later. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Meisen and I make videos on tech, servers and home labs. If you've seen the intro to this video, you'll know that a long time ago I watched a video by Craft Computing on X79 Chinese motherboards for servers. We all know how much Jeff loves his X79 Chinese boards. And in today's video, what we're going to do is open up this one. This is a Chinese X79 motherboard which I ordered from AliExpress for what seems like an insurmountable amount months ago. Dual socket CPU motherboard, uh, DDR3. In front of me, I have a bunch of components. These components, uh, for the most part, are gonna go into the new server. Firstly, what we have is a couple of Cooler Master Hyper H410s. These are gonna go into the new server. We have a bunch of DDR3 ECC registered RAM. We have two E5-2660 CPUs. I have these on hand, so these are gonna work really good. And we also have a power supply, a Corsair TX850. This power supply was taken from my previous machine. Uh, if you haven't seen that since I recently upgraded, you can go up here and click on the link and have a look at that. So I thought for this, uh, for this first video in this series of upgrading my home lab, that we would open up this package from AliExpress, which hopefully contains my Chinese X79 dual CPU motherboard. I'm really excited about this. This is probably the most excited I've been about any kind of product that I've ordered. Um, and this has come from some random factory in China. So this is very strange. Um, we're gonna open this up and then we're gonna have a look at the components and the build quality. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put in some CPUs, the coolers and the RAM then we're gonna plug it into one of my monitors and make sure it boots into the BIOS. And we're gonna use the trusty iFixit kit as well to get this all going. So let's get into this package. Comes somewhat wrapped quite well. And here we go, motherboard. This is exciting works. SATA cables, a bunch of what looks to be heat paste. I don't think I'm going to use that. The mounts for the fans and the dual socket CPU motherboard. IO shield. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. So we've got the two CPU sockets. Let's check the pins. Yeah, looks good. They look fine. And the second one looks fine. No bent pins. That's good. We've got two, four, six, eight DDR3 memory modules uh, slots for those. Motherboard connector top corner, uh, what looks like two CPU, two CPU uh, power connectors, which would make sense since this is a dual motherboard. We'll better use another connector from the power unit to connect up that. 
what I am seeing, which is quite good on this motherboard, is good heat sinks. Um, the heat sinks are well attached, they're not sliding around anywhere, and they're pretty good size on the VRMs uh, from both sides actually. I like that they've separated these two up. That's a good, um, a good design choice because having it in one location uh, is gonna create more heat in that area, so separating them up is gonna help. E5 2660s can run quite hot, but it's what I have spare, so I'm using those for now. Uh, heat sink on the south bridge. We've got a battery compartment, M.2 slot. Uh, this is one of the reasons I got this board. Um, a couple of PCR Express slots, a times eight, times 16, and some times ones, uh, some smaller ones, so that's good. These motherboards also come with a BIOS error checker, so it gives you a number, although I don't have any manual to look at, but I'm sure there'll be something online. And then we've got some, um, some basic fan headers, front BIOS, all the normal stuff, a lot of um, screw holes so you can mount this down. Let's have a look at the uh, IO on the back. So we've got these um, ancient prehistoric PS2 slots, but not worried about using those. USB 3, two of those, six USB 2, two um, Ethernet ports, and then audio, standard audio output there. Looking at the board, I don't see any issues with, um, with quality or anything like that, it's really well built. Um, I have to give props to the people who designed it. Um, it's really well laid out looking at it. I do like the VRM as I've mentioned before, like having them separated out like that. One of the downsides with this board in particular is that I believe from the description online is that we have CPU fan here. So we have one CPU fan at the top and the second CPU fan is down here. However, at the bottom, we just have system fan two here and system fan one. And I don't believe there are any more um, connectors for system fans. So it's very limited on the cooling, at least on the motherboard. But what I do have is a fan hub, which I'm going to use for this server. I'm not gonna take off the heatsink for the um, chipset because um, I think I'm gonna trust in the uh, advertisement of the chipset that it is. It should be an Intel chipset, even though technically that these type of dual setups for uh, this chipset actually never really existed. But um, Kraft Computing uh, has had several of these boards and has taken off the heat sinks and has checked the chipsets and they do seem to be using genuine Intel chipsets. So um, these boards do work really well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to install the RAM and the CPUs and the coolers and then give this a test. So now we've put in the dual E5-2660 2.2 gigahertz Intel Xeon CPUs into the motherboard. We've also put in 64 gigabytes of ECC registered memory for each CPU, bringing a total of 128 gig of RAM 
we fit the two Cooler Master H410s on. Um, I've used the stock fans from those coolers, although in the next uh, parts of this series of the Home Lab upgrade, I will be changing these fans around for some Noctua fans of the same size, just to run the machine a little bit quieter since it's in the living room. So now I've got the motherboard all plugged in, uh, but one problem that I've run into is that the power unit that we're going to use only has one CPU connector and I don't have another cable for it. So I can only test one of the CPUs uh, and therefore only four channels of the memory. Um, I've plugged in a basic graphics card to get the video output to the monitor. Um, we're going to see how this test goes, otherwise I will have to get myself another cable for this power unit or switch it around to another power unit. But let's see if it boots up with one of the CPUs. Okay, so after a few hit or miss attempts, uh, I figured out the problem was that I had the CPU plugged into uh, the wrong power socket and then the fan connecting to the opposite. So we are booting on one of the CPUs right now. And as we can see in the BIOS, we have all 64 gig of memory from socket zero uh, showing up here. The CPU configuration, we can see that in CPU socket zero, we have the Intel Xeon E52660 registering at 2.2 gigahertz, uh, showing up all correctly with all eight cores showing up correctly and um, all of the hyper-threading turned on. So that is socket zero working. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna see if uh, socket one shows up the same way. So I've tested the other CPU um, and it doesn't boot on that and the reason for that is likely due to the fact that it will boot with only one CPU on socket zero first and then with both if you put both in. But if you plug it in uh, to socket one, uh, it probably doesn't register that as the first socket. So that's likely the reason that it's not booting up. Um, but I am very satisfied with this. Um, it does work on socket zero. It shows up the full specs of the CPU. It shows up all of the RAM, which is really awesome. So we have one uh, CPU running at eight cores uh, with 64 gig of memory. Um, as soon as I get the other power cable, I'm gonna follow up running both CPUs with the 128 gig of memory. And uh, I think what you can conclude from this video is that the Chinese X79 motherboards, they're really good. I'm very impressed with the build quality. I definitely would recommend it. It comes with diagnostic codes. It comes with a ton of features that normally comes on much more expensive motherboards. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below uh, to where I bought this motherboard. The sellers do change fairly frequently, but there's a few places in uh, AliExpress that do sell this motherboard. Um, there are single CPU versions of this board as well. So after spending this morning switching the power units around, I now have a, a power unit that has two CPU cables and now we have everything showing up in the BIOS. We have all 128 gig of DDR3 memory showing up as well as both CPUs showing up in socket zero from yesterday, showing up all eight cores, 2.2 mega, uh, 2.2 gigahertz and in socket one, eight cores, uh, 2.2 gigahertz, uh, with everything uh, hyper-threading and all that enabled. So everything shows up as it should. I've gone through the settings on the motherboard and changed the date and the time and stuff like that, standard stuff. In the next video, I'm going to put this motherboard as well as the operating system and install everything into the new case. Uh, so stick around for that. If you like the video, please uh, press the like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos from me and I'll see you in the next video.